I think that Rogers had such an imprint on players specifically, guys that were in the studio, guys that were playing live. And it's so exciting to have a kit like that back out now because I feel like the world of vintage drums is becoming really popular again and it's really exciting. And I feel like, I feel like every one of my favorite studios has some sort of vintage kit that's just crushing. And so I really am excited for Rogers to kind of be back and have their stamp um, on players again. Um, just make that imprint of music that I think was so strong in the 60s, 70s, 80s. My name is Brett Kramer, and I play drums for a band called Half Alive. Um, I also produce and record on the side as well. When I was in fifth grade, I started on acoustic guitar, but my fingers kept getting hurt, and I felt like I wasn't progressing as fast as my friends were. And in sixth grade, uh, my friends and I were starting a band and they needed a drummer. And so naturally I kind of jumped on and I felt like I progressed a little bit faster on the drums and also had like a good time. I just really enjoyed being in like a group of friends that were playing music after school. And it just became like a really beautiful out outlet for me during that time. So to me, Rogers has always had a warm place in my heart. Uh, it wasn't until like 2019 when we were on tour and I was able to be in Nashville at Nelson Drums Shop and I got to play Rogers for the first time and I just from there had to buy it and that was kind of my intro to just to being able to like play those drums. I've always been inspired by soul drummers and Al Jackson Jr. was huge for me and his work with Al Green specifically and just knowing that he played the, that Rogers kit, the 2012, uh, 16. Another big influence of me is Darren King with Mute Math and seeing them live um, at the Will Turn in LA. I remember seeing his Rogers kick drum and just being so blown away by the sound. And tons of studio recordings that I know Rogers have been on, tons of my favorite drummers. And they've always just have a warm place of just the legacy and their, just the sound. And, I think the history and I think culture behind the drums has always inspired me and felt really excited to partner with the drum company with, with that kind of legacy. The thing that I just loved about the Covington kit is it did the same thing that I was loving with my vintage Rogers drum set. And so basically when I got it, the first thing I did is I took it to the studio, wanted to see how it sounded under mics and it just blew me away. It had, had that same vibe. It had that same mojo from the vintage kit that I had and really excited to be instantly. And then when we were getting ready for tour rehearsals for this year, um, set it up and it, it had the same, it had the exact same impact that the my vintage Rogers was giving me. And that was a thing that I think made me most excited because it still had that vibe in the studio, but then it had that punch in a live setting and. One thing that our front of house guy always tells me is the thing that he loves is when I play softer, it has that warmth and touch and delicacy to it. And then when I play louder, it, ha it still has that impact and uh, intensity that I think you'd want in those si in those situations. And that, yeah, that's just what I've been loving with, with the new kit. And especially the snare has blown me away. Um, the brass B7 Dynasonic, it just, when I, when I start playing louder, it shows up, and when I start playing quieter, it still has vibe. And yeah, I think that's just been the most exciting thing for me to just sit down and it just still keeps the characteristics of everything that I loved with my vintage kit. But then with the touch, the modern upgrade and durability, which wasn't a huge problem before, but I think just that, up, that little upgrade, I think still it just makes it such a good road kit and studio kit and just kind of fills everything that I'm, that I'm working on right now.